Welcome to Beyond the Frontline Podcast, where your hosts, U.S. Air Force veterans, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson, will help you transition from the front line to the home front. Listen every other Wednesday as they will bring great conversations, resources, tips, and feel good stories that will resonate and relate. Now, here's your hosts, Donna Hoffmeyer and Jay Johnson. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Beyond the Front Lines. This is one of your co-hosts, Jay Johnson. I would assume if you've been with us for any length of time, you can tell the difference between my voice and my partner in crime's voice, Miss Donna Hoffmeyer. Donna, what's happening? It's good to be back in this space and to have people tuning in with us. What's going on with you? Mm. I The whole tell the difference between voices you know why that is it's not because yours is deeper and mine's higher it's because <laughs> yours is like robust and polished oh. that's like the same joke i make every time because i i'm getting more comfortable but the reality mm-hmm. is when i listen to the two of us i'm all like oh who's from the trailer park and who's who's from the city that's not that's <laughs> not true at all that's not true at all i would say you're you're more refined in life i grew up and was educated in oklahoma for goodness sakes veterans listening from oklahoma look it's self-deprecating don't don't take that personal it's meant to be like i'm a northern new hampshire gal and <laughs> and we got more moose than people so there oh, you know you can compare yeah. it on different levels there you go so did i tell you don i went on a hike um uh, Gosh, it's been back in the fall now, I guess. But oh, yes. in Colorado, when walked right up on, we, Sherry and I and her sister and her husband, walked right up on a bull moose. And uh, Yes, I, I saw mean, the picture she put beautiful. up. Yeah, beautiful. And then just a little further up the the trail was Mama Moose with a calf, right? So that's when you have to be careful. But we, what an amazing experience. Uh, I was wondering what y'all were doing. I was, the pictures were coming up. I looked over at Brian. I'm like, they off the rocker. Oh, I, I have been charged by a moose inadvertently. Yeah. Springtime, mom had her baby. She was on the edge of the forest, couldn't see her. My buddy and I were little, like we're 12, 13, whatever. We're sliding in this, we call it the sugar bowl, like the stand that went down. And all of a sudden I heard this rutting noise, this blowing out in the hoof. And we didn't even look back because we're country kids. We know we're gone. Like I darted across the street and we turn around, we look up. And out comes the baby moose and the mommy right behind it. I'm like, you guys are like, we, we call the city people flatlanders. Yeah. And we kind of tease them a little bit because they will come up in our neck of the woods and they're looking for that photo op and they're like, oh, and they think the moose is all docile or the deer (laughs) or whatever. And they try to go pat it. These these are the people that provide entertainment for me on YouTube and TikTok or TikTok. you know some other medium because someone captures it on film and you're like what were they thinking oh, right Oh my but, lord yes on its backside stupid for the audience that does not live in the country do not <laughs> go pat a moose they're not docile animals they will mess your world up yes yeah it made me think of that old Hooters tagline the restaurant that said delightfully tacky yet unrefined or something like that right so <laughs> i i have a level of refinement i know when to be polished in this space and in other things other people look at my life and go what were you thinking jay so i, I don't know still trying to figure this thing out oh lord all right well you know speaking of figuring things out i'm gonna roll us over to what we're gonna talk about let's today do it because... i'm excited for our guest today yeah this is gonna be good combo yes because the, you had said today you're like hey i don't think i'll be able to make it and i was like you really need to make this uh, one i actually changed the time to have because yeah. this is something Thank that's been comedy. yeah well it's something that you and i both have beefs with right so <laughs> we're we're bringing not, in... not 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 confrontationally with each other. Something that no. both of us doesn't sit well with our spirits, and we find ourselves talking about it. Yes, we get frustrated over this stuff. So I, I mean, we always joke. All these topics that we bring up, we really do have these conversations. Like Jay and I do talk about this stuff. That's how oh. the podcasts often come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we're like, dang it. So this is what makes for good episodes for our it, listeners. Hopefully, it does. It does. So right. backstory. Um, you were not on the interview, but I know, you know, um, here, uh, first coast heroes outreach, which is a nonprofit that used to be in Florida. They moved to Texas. I run into my meet them. 
you know, we become friends. Teddy, the general founder is, comes on the podcast. That was one that you weren't able to be on. And uh, I know Caitlin and anyways, we all talk. Somewhere in there, there's some post that comes up and Caitlin goes, oh, Bruce, you need to meet Donna. So I'm like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, like that. And so I get introduced to Bruce Thompson, who's with us today. And (laughs) and Bruce is like, okay. And so we just start talking. And I said, well, let's meet. You know, let's just have conversation. And our conversation led to the topic of boards. And I'm not sure who was boards of directors. Boards of directors, correct, right? And I'm not sure who was getting more heated, him or I, but I quickly realized (laughs) we had a commonality here. So I said, you know, Bruce, I think you should come on the podcast and talk about this. And the good part is Bruce is similar to us. He's a Marine. He's not Air Force. I said similar. He's a brother brother from another service. Yeah. And so uh, 24-year Marine. He had a rough transition, much like a lot of us did, went through the loss of identity. He lost himself as a military service member, as a Marine, and I was uh, medically discharged, right? And so he didn't get to finish the career he wanted, and he was an athlete, so he kind of lost two sides of himself, right? And he's like, oh, now what, you know? Yeah. And so he has a very good Marine wife who kicked him in the back end and said, <laughs> yeah, not today, buddy. So get ass in gear and let's go. Right. So through a turn of events, they make their, he, he does a couple of corporate jobs, not working. Didn't, didn't work out for him. He says, yep, this isn't what I want. They end up moving to Jacksonville, Florida. They're there for now seven years and i'm gonna let bruce tell the story of how where he went and how he ended up in nonprofits, and how we end up having conversation about doctors which we're going to talk about today so hi bruce hello how are we doing good was that a good summary so it was but i'll I'll clarify a couple quick points i did not medically retire i retired uh on you know regular retirement uh it was just sped up by the fact that the injuries kept me from being able to finish that last uh six years of service so that then uh, this is a marine medical retirement like oh i'm sorry you're not bye-bye right. <laughs> so yeah not not a formal medical retirement but just the reality of uh yeah. y- your body only has so many uh bumps bruises it can take before you gotta say no i can't do those basic marine things like they add stand, up, run, run it all adds up. Uh, but but yeah so there I, there i was you know Coming up, uh, retiring, I was I was the active duty Marine. And, you know, those of y'all who know us Marines, you know, that's like a huge part of who we are, mentality uh, in the heart, uh, and we live and breathe it. And then I was also an athlete. That's what I really know myself from, like, eight, nine years old. You know, I was always in sports. And there I was transitioning because, you know, too many surgeries and the body was beat up, and I wasn't either anymore. I wasn't an active duty Marine. I wasn't the athlete. And you're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And so, of course, you know, I, I set myself up very well. I, I had a solid trade, uh, hard skills. Uh, I got my degrees while I was in. So I was able to find employment opportunities. You know, I, I'm that person who was hanging up on headhunters, you know, because I was, I don't want that. And finally, you answer the call and you're like, okay, yeah, I took the job. Easy job, no purpose for passion, moved on. Kind of ran to that same thing. Again, it, it took me almost a year to figure out who I was, where I belonged, and, and to find it. Uh, and as you said, you know, it, it was ugly. Like, you know, depression, anxiety, you know, me and the dog taking naps on the couch, disconnecting from the world was a reality. Uh, and I got that amazing Marine Corps spouse who kicked me in the rear side and said, uh uh-uh, buddy, we ain't doing this. Uh, I don't care what you do, but get up and go figure it out. I found myself in the military veteran transition space, teaching the TAP program, working with nonprofits. Um, And then, you know, out of the blue, we came home and she came home one day and said, hey, you know, uh, lease is up in six months. What are we doing? We're in San Diego. I'm like, we're not resigning it. Didn't know that was a life choice. I I would just (laughs) make making one of those, you know, like tough guy decisions and like, ha ha. Uh, 
Well, 10 minutes later, I printed out maps in the U.S. She had one in one room. I had one in the other. We came back together. We had six cities. Uh, they matched. Uh, we picked Jacksonville, Florida off the map. We'd never been every day for a day in our lives. We didn't know a single soul. We just did the military thing and said, we're going to go and make it work. I show up uh, that night. You know, we, we had a short-term apartment. Uh, across the courtyard was a Army veteran. Uh, his his spouse is our realtor who helped us find our home. Uh, awesome. Me and him that night sat there and started talking about, uh, you know, war stories, military, you know, Army versus Marine, blah, 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 the local community. He said, hey, what are you doing on, on Saturday? And mind you, it's like a Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm like driving around lost trying to figure out what Jacksonville is. He <laughs> said, nah, stood up. I'm going to take you all to this event. I said, cool. I went to the event. It's the largest recurring gatherings, uh, recurring gathering of military veterans and their families in the state of Florida. Talked me in there. I'm at the who's who in the zoo. We talked to the resources. We listened to the speaker program. Like eyes bugged out wide open. Like, yes, this is the community that I was looking for. All these different nonprofits, all these different organizations that are all about taking care of the military and veteran uh, community. So fast forward three months, I go to the next quarterly event. I go find the, you know, Marines founded this, of course, because, you know, that's what Marines do. Uh, and I basically said, I want in. And was kind of like beat up. I'm going to say borderline stalked him until he let me in. Um, next thing you know, we I'm at the third event. Uh, which is six months in, and we basically do a left seat, right seat, and I take over, um, you know, as the executive director for uh, this nonprofit movement. I'm on the board of the nonprofit while I'm running the movement. Uh, I did two years, came shut it down. I joined another nonprofit, you know, helped build a board. You know, COVID came out, I left it, started another nonprofit. You know, there's a trend here. I, I found my niches. <laughs> I enjoy it. It's a passion. Uh, but as we're going to jump into, man, board of directors. <laughs> it is such a a wonderful, ugly thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a dichotomy there, Bruce. Look, before we jump in on the board topic, I just got to say this, Bruce. As two men in this space together, listening to, or, you know, others listening to this that are going to be men. I applaud you for sharing, uh, being transparent and sharing, man, when I got out of the Marine Corps, my identity was attached to that. Now I find myself lost and PTSD and depression and all these things. And because we don't talk about it often. We have to though. But we have we, to. that was why I want, I just wanted to call that out for everybody and, and celebrate you, Bruce, commend you. I do the same thing, but a lot of men, right, still a little bit old school where we hide those things and act like we're tough and just these don't, these things don't happen to us. And so thank you for bringing it into the light and saying, man, and, and for the tough love, tough love is love, right? For the tough love your, <laughs> your bride showed you and saying, mm-mm. Okay. So anyways, I, I know we're here to talk about boards. I'm excited about that, but I, I couldn't miss, you know, the opportunity to say thanks for bringing that out. That's a good point too, no. because that's, that is something on many levels. So yeah. just the fall apart as it, when I was a nurse in the military, I saw the far end of things when we we're dealing with MSTs, they're not all women. And for the audience, that's military sexual trauma. It's not all women. So um, the fact that you can say like, I didn't have my shit all together. And, and I really fell apart. Yeah. It, but here you are thriving. Right. And I think that's what a lot of times Jay and I want people to see. And I say all the time when, when you hear like, Oh, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to crash and burn. I'm like, well, I hope you crash and burn. Cause that's what gets that first layer off. It kind of, nudge you in the right direction and then you get to rise like the phoenix right so yeah, it's 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 definitely one of those ones we learn more from from failure than success and you know i i'm out there with different uh nonprofits and different organizations where we've got to focus we lose too many 
because, you know, we've, we've got the macho mentality. We talk about the buddy checks. We talk about check when you're strong friends, uh, check when your friend that's always smiling and joking because they're masking so much more. Absolutely. But yeah, we, we could go for five hours talking about uh, the mental health side. <laughs> no, yeah, let's yeah. Not get down but that we're not going to. Let's, let's talk over and talk about boards. the frustration of board of directors. Let's yeah. get into that. Who wants to start? I'll just sit back and. Well, I, I'll say this. So here's why we feel like this is important, right? So Bruce has been on boards maybe, and still is, I assume. Donna, you're you're still active in that space. Me too. Mm-hmm. I, I think five or six different boards I've been on, and what an honor, personally, right? I think for somebody to see something in us, yes, to invite us to the table to play a crucial part. I think now that I've been in this space for eight years, probably there's been a maturation. I I see healthy things in boards, and I see a lot of unhealthy aspects. And and Bruce, you've alluded, you know, to a little bit of that. I think uh, there's two different types of boards, and I'll see what you think about this. I think there are working boards and governance boards, and I think it's really important to understand what you're being invited to the table to. A governance board might be a group of individuals that truly just come together to to provide some kind of fiduciary oversight to something, but maybe their expectation is they're not rolling up the sleeves, getting involved in any way, shape, or form. But a working board, I think, uh, understands coming in that there's expectations and and you're going to be asked to help the organization be successful. And you need to know what that looks like because, Bruce, and I'm I'm really going to try to turn to you to get your perspective on this, is I think a lot of people join, join boards for the wrong reasons. They join because they see it as a resume bullet and it, and it postures them mm-hmm. in some way. And I just think that's not the reason to join. What say you, Bruce? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, you talk about you know governance and working. Uh, I kind of put it as the oversight and working. Uh, but governance and oversight, very, very similar. Uh, but, yeah, you're spot on. There's so many people who are like, I'm looking to be on a board. And you're like, well, why? What causes? What do you want to be on a board? Are you looking to be, you know, a treasurer or a secretary? You know, and people are like, I just want to be on a board. I'm like, okay, you shouldn't be on a board then. If you can't answer the questions of why that board uh, organization, you know, answers your passions uh, and purpose, you don't belong on the board. Um, and again, dealing with, uh, a lot of different nonprofit organizations where we created them from scratch. So we had to develop a board and there was the, Hey, if you're going to be in this board, this isn't a status board. This is a, we're going to roll up our sleeves. We're going to get dirty. And there's expectations. Uh, and there's nothing worse than someone saying, I want to be in the board and realizing that they just wanted, you know, a bullet LinkedIn resume. Right. social, what you want to call it. And then when you come out there and say, hey, I'm relying on you to do your piece because we're building structured out. We're building this from scratch. We're trying to make something great. And it's not there. And what it ends up doing, it kills momentum. It hurts relationships. And I've seen lifelong friendships go down the hill quickly because, you know, people just gave up on each other. And, you know, I expected you know, a bare minimum, and you couldn't give me that much. I've seen founders who, hey, to make my organization seem so much bigger and better, I want to have a board and I want to have these big names on it. And so they call these big names in and then it's like, okay, they're there, but what are they doing? And then you have, you know, a guidance or an oversight who are giving you feedback and guidance and saying, hey, you know, you can't do X because you're you're crossing you know these legal, legal items. Yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. Like, whoa, are you not listening to the people that you brought on board to help you build and shape? And so it's funny, you know, you, you have board members that don't live up to expectations. You have founders <clears throat> that don't understand what a board actually is. And then of course, if it all works. Those are those organizations you see that that pop up and are like doing, oh my goodness, amazing things. And and it's 
it's there, it's possible, it, it does work. But this is that whole research, understanding, relationships, mm -hmm. um, and really before you get into something, understanding what it is you're about to get into. So it's I'm listening and I'm kind of smirking here because there's like all these thoughts going in my head. So one of the things you guys both have alluded to is the governing versus the working. And I relate it as almost the size of the nonprofits, right? So the smaller they are, the more gritty you've got to be, right? Like you've got to roll your sleeves up when you're doing these grassroots starting, just forming. And once they get moving, and depending on the caliber of the executive director, then the board should probably be more just kind of governing, advising, you know, like it, it can move to that, but it takes a long time to get from there to there. And the other thing that I see happen that board members, they blow my mind because I have been on boards with very well-connected people, very well-connected people and watch them not leverage their network. I'm all like, well, why are you here? If you can't give me your time in, in like literally being at the whatever, can you leverage your network? I, I have literally put it out to people before asking like, do you talk with other equals you know try to gently because i i'm not there to insult anybody's intelligence i mean they're these are very intelligent people and they didn't get to where they were randomly but it's almost like it doesn't occur to them that the reason they're sitting there is not for their good looks it is to leverage a network roll up your sleeves and use your skill set to help advise them have we thought of this or have we thought of that or looking at it from different angles and it blows my mind. I have, I have sat on a couple of boards and I am, I talk to many boards because I, I do help a lot of nonprofits and I hear the same thing over and over. There's one and I looked at their board and they're all suitors. Every single one in this picture is with the suit, the tie and the corporate and very intimidating looking like damn they got it going on right and the executive director's like my board is defunct they don't do anything and when i told him they need to step up he's like i'm like a one-man band like the monkey with the cymbals and the drums and when i'm like hey i need more the comment that came back to the executive director was oh well if you need us working more then you need to pay us and I was like, I would have um, removed them from the board immediately. That would have been the end of that. Yeah. And, and as you talk about that, you know, and we, we can talk about the different types of boards, but usually when it's a smaller startup, you know, one of the things that come in is the fundraising, fundraising piece. Oh, you know, yeah. The, the board members coming on board with some expectations to reach out to their network and help raise some funds, uh, whether that is direct donation, whether that is uh, hosting events to, to do that, however it is, but you have some of that. And there's individuals who are like, your whole job is like sales, like getting people to invest, you know? And then you look at the board and you're like, you brought in $0 in a quarter. You're like, come on now, like you could have called one friend, one friend could have gave me a hundred bucks, you know, and when you're a small startup, a hundred dollars is a big deal, mm -hmm. but it's, it's those little things. So it's funny that you, you kind of talk about board members having influence, which is why they're been invited to the board, but then not leveraging their network or leveraging that influence to actually grow uh, the organization and, you know, make meaningful movements and purposes with it. Yeah, so Bruce and Don, I love, you know, organically where this is going and and, and this is education for our listeners. Mm -hmm. We want you to I think there is uh a great opportunity to serve in your community 
by looking for opportunities out there, nonprofits that are doing work that you know you have heart a heart for, uh, that you have passion for, and and it's tough to get good board members. So what we're trying to do is educate you and say, hey, listen, here's the deal. It's not just to occupy a seat. There is something to do. So on this front, you know, Bruce and Donna, I I think. Uh, what I have found, I do a lot of strategic planning even mm-hmm. for uh, boards, Bruce, and the thing I see happen more often than not is they play small. And some of that traces back to expectation management from the very beginning, right? Who gets invited to boards? I can tell you I a lot of times see buddies invited to boards. I understand inviting somebody who has been a big contributor particularly financially. And so maybe your way of rewarding them is to say, we'd like to invite a member of your company, corporation, team, organization, whatever, to have a seat on our board. That's that's great. But I think it's important to manage the expectations on the front end. And it often doesn't happen. It doesn't say in a letter that maybe you're signing, here's what we're asking of you. Sometimes it could be we're asking you as the board member to write a check every year, right? to the organization. I've seen some with really small amounts, like, man, if you write a check for 50 bucks every year to the board, we're happy. Others, I've seen them put a responsibility on their, the board members to say $5,000 to $10,000. You're expected to bring to the organization as part of you sitting on this board. Uh, And I, so expectation management's really important. I'll come back to that in a minute where I had an outing with a board I served in because I asked for expectations to be codified so that future board members knew exactly what was expected. But I'm going to pause there and just turn back to, to you two to see if you have any commentary on what I just shared. And and I'll throw out there expectations management. Uh, And as we're talking about, you know, nonprofits starting, you know, to create a board. Yeah. One of the failures that, you know, the founder of the nonprofit and the, the leadership of that nonprofit, when they're like, yeah, we're ready to move on to a board, they don't put anything down on paper as to the purpose of the board. Yeah. You know, is, is it going to be one of those, um, you know, as my uh, the chairman, this is what expectations are. And you know, give me a job description. You know, we, we have to have something. Other than just saying, here's a title. Otherwise, you know, we can all get our business cards, our name tags, and we can put whatever we want to on them. But there has to be, this is the expectations for uh, the chairman. This is the expectations for the treasurer. This is the expectations for the uh, secretary. Because those three are required to have a legitimate board, a uh, yeah. nonprofit. So at a minimum, you have to have those. And then as you grow, okay, what are those other board members? Uh, and so when we start something without, you know, that forethought of what will this become, what will this be, what is the ask of these individuals that we're going to be bringing on to help us shape and grow this organization, uh, we set ourselves up for failure. Mm-hmm. And I've seen, I've seen board members who came in and they said, okay, is there a, a description? Is there you know, some kind of, you know, contract that explains this and people are like, what are you talking about? And like, you know, that's, that's a red flag right there. If you're asking for something very simple as what do you expect from me as a board member and you can't get it, you probably need to either completely step out of that because they're not ready or you take that as, okay, part of the thing I'm going to do when I join your board is I am going to create this for you because we have to have these. And, and I've had companies, you know, come back in and said, this is our working board and here's our advisory board. And so these, these members aren't taking a formal role, but they're bouncing back ideas and, you know, they're mentors. They're, Mm -hmm. Hey, we've been here, we've done it, take our lessons learned. So I, I think, you know, figuring out who has the power and a lot of people who are the founders, uh, of, of an organization like, hey, this is my idea and I want to run with it. They fail to realize that when you create a board, the board actually holds the power over the organization. 
you know, and you answer to the board and pe- people are like, what? Like, yeah. no, I don't. So, so yeah, that's, that's another you know, train of thought that we haven't hit yet. Yeah. One quick thing, Donna, before your, your, oh, your, your voice comes in and shares on this, Bruce, that's such a worthwhile point, right? I, but I always try to remind the boards that I serve on. I'm presently serving on one now. We're not the CEO. The CEO is charged with the execution of the daily mission. But I 100% agree. The board is a critical part for casting vision, strategically stating, you know, these are things we want to accomplish. And then the CEO and team ought to go do it. Uh and and if there's any pushback, if there's any disagreement, those things can be hashed out. I do find it funny how uh, at times, like I've worked with an organization where the CEO said, well, I'm going to recruit and begin grooming my replacement. Mm, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure the board ultimately holds responsibility for making sure they find the right person uh to do the work next, right? So a little bit of that is what you're, I think, alluding to, Bruce, if not absolutely alluding to, and and I do think that's important for sure. Yeah, and and that goes to roles, responsibilities, and understanding not only from the board, but from the founder and and the you know leadership team that's actually doing the day to day work yeah. of what is the role, what is the purpose, and every organization has a different you know, structure built into it. So those are things that you have to understand and decide on what structure is right for you uh, before going in there. So, you know, with that, Donna, hop in here. What do you think? Well, (laughs) you said that last part and I was just smiling. If you don't have an interest in what the nonprofit's doing, do not jump on the board. Like, I mean, really, it's there. Trust me. There's like 45,000 plus nonprofits just for veterans. You can find one that suits your needs. And in the world of remote, you don't even have to be in the same state. Hmm. So, I mean, find what interests you because you are one, going to want to leverage your net, you know, your network to say, look at this. Number two, you're probably going to have a lot more insight to it. And a lot more creative thinking to that. And and three, you're going to be engaged because it's interest is of interest to you. So be specific and don't get enamored. I'll tell you, I have a rule and <laughs> the rule is when the compliments start coming, I'm like, Oh, here it comes. Here comes the, the non-vol. That was the military. Here comes the non-vol when the compliments start coming. Do not let your ego get caught up in the compliments. Don't. Look at this objectively. Is this a good match? Do I have a skill set that I can offer? You know, granted, you're not going to have all the answers. And when you step in, you're you're stepping in with a whole bunch of people that you don't know, even through interviewing. I mean, I interviewed for my boards and I mean, I knew them by name, but I didn't know them, know them. And that, and then you learn personalities and, and that's just all about emotional intelligence, learn to work with people. But before that, you can figure out if this is going to be a fit for you. Don't be afraid of that. And the other half of it, understand when you stop aligning with the direction that a board is going in or a nonprofit is going in, it's going to happen. You will, the board will change a direction or the, or the executive director, whoever that nonprofit might shift in a direction that doesn't align with you for whatever reason. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means, A, do you want to change your alignment? Do you want to go with that? Or B, do you want to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to let somebody else that's better aligned with this to step in and I'm going to, I'm going to step back. That's not wrong. Nobody should be hated for that. I think that's a, a smart person to do that. So I think there's a lot of thought that has to go in before you go jump on a board instead of like, yeah, I want to be on a board. I think it'll be a great experience. Oh, it'll be an experience. Don't worry <laughs> about that. But like, really, put your ego aside and and determine that you want to help. And I, I'll tell you, I was on a board. Compliments of Jay Johnson. <clears throat> And I love him for it. No, I say that tongue in cheek. But the board had never done 
a large event, right? This was, they were doing a big event. Jay and I saw their nervous level of it. And long story short, um, we did execute it. Um, and we saw how much of a struggle it was. And this, these are seasoned board members. They had been on these boards for a long time, but their skill set did not lend towards how to set up an event. So that's another thing people need to consider. If half your board has no idea and you need to do event planning and you need to do marketing and you're not good at that and you're going to go hide out, don't jump on a board. Don't jump on a small board. Definitely don't jump on a small board because marketing and fundraising is is paramount in a small board. Maybe in a big one, really big one where you can hide where there's multiple boards in it, but not a small board. So that's my thoughts. Yeah. And so a couple of those things, and I love those. One of the points that we talk about, um, and I've been involved with a lot of brand new startup uh, nonprofits, you know, hey, someone's got an idea, we get a group of us together, we say, yes, this is going to work, let's go with it. And we all know when you start, this was the idea. And then as you start implementing it and you start, you know, massaging it and uh, having those conversations and you start putting things into action. Okay, well, you know, what we thought was going to be the mission, the purpose, the drive. Well, we're still in the vicinity, but it actually starts going to something a little bit different. Uh, and that's one of those ones we have, you know, I, I had it. Um, I actually love the purpose and I thought we were doing something great. But the founder was kind of like, hey, you know, we started out to do this. We natural kind of just flow took us in this other direction. And I was cool with that new direction and it was working and we we're going for it. And it was like, well, you know, I, I want to go back to what we really established. And I was like, okay, you have something that's working. We have something that's growing. We have something that people are, are drawn to. Why would you move away from what people want and what's working? And it was like, we can still do both, but where are we going to you know, hang our hat? And what's going to be that secondary? And it was like, no, absolutely not. You know, this was the vision. This was the drive. We're going to to go back to what you know i said from the start cool i left um and man people get their feelings hurt when when you say hey I, thanks but no thanks it's time for me to move on yeah and and we all have to do that whether it's a job whether uh it would it's a volunteer event whether it's on the board we all have a, a natural ending point and we have to you know, one, develop a professional exit strategy. You know, just don't, hey, I'm taking my ball and going home because you didn't do what I want to do. No, no. But we have to have that uh, professional exit point, but a realization of over time, things change for the organization, for ourselves. Uh, life happens. And you, know, you might want to be out there and say, I can give you. 40 hours a week doing this job and something might come up and it comes, I can give you five to 10. Well, if you were running things, five to 10 is not going to work. Yeah. You've got to understand yeah. that that ego put it on the shelf, take the backpack off, hand it, hand it baton over, whatever you want to call it, but you got to be ready to do that. So yeah, yeah, Jay. I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, a lot of boards. Well, let's talk about some skills they need. A, a, I think most boards could benefit from having an attorney, right? Yes. For obvious reasons on staff. And then you can come up with some others that you think would be. Grant writer. Yeah, for sure. A grant writer would be. A Everybody pandemic. needs one. But here's what's happened. We almost give some excuses, right? I don't mean to single out any attorney friends if you're listening to this, but, you know, we can look at them and go, oh, but they're really busy people. Mm, excuse me. We're all busy people, exactly. right? Exactly. And and we're we're donating our time, which takes us back to these expectations management. So I was on a board where it was so loosey goosey. I went to 
uh, the CEO of the company and to the board chair and said, would you mind if I codify and draw up minimum expectations on what this will look like? So, you know, some of it included things like you're going to attend 75% of all board meetings. If we're looking at a calendar year, 12 months, 75% looks like nine meetings, right? You can miss three because things are going to come up. But you need to be there because you have to have quorum, right? You've got to have enough voices in the room to vote and indicate board agreement or have meaningful discussion if there's any disagreement. I'm sitting with these two. I've drawn these things up. The board chair says, I think these are fine, Jay. We'll we'll put these up for a vote at the next board meeting. I believe it'll probably be adopted, but I want you to know I'll never reinforce it. That's what the board chair said to me. Yeah. And, uh, and I said to him, why? And he said, because to enforce these things means most of them will not do business with me anymore. He's talking about personally now. They won't do business with me anymore. And I looked at him and I said, and this is exactly why I won't do business with you now. That's true. That's real. Yeah. I, I've yeah. resigned from boards, Bruce, as you were indicating, knowing when professionally there's a time, right? Most boards for our listeners have commitments. Many of them are three-year commitments at a minimum. Mm -hmm. The opportunity to extend maybe for another three, it's based on what's written into their uh, bylaws. Yeah, their bylaws, their governance. Uh, but the one thing I've done anytime I've gotten to a place where I just feel like we're not in congruence or I've given what I can give and, and now can't actively participate like I believe they deserve. In my letters of resignation, I've always outlined, I hope you found the time that I was with you meaningful and of value. Here are the things that I believe I contributed to that helped the organization in a positive way. Nine, ten things, bang, 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 right? So I'm not leaving poking anybody in the eye. I'm not leaving accusing them of being disorganized or, uh, you know, lacking in some way. I'm just saying, here's what I brought into the table. Thank you for the opportunity. But I do, I want to work with people who are hungry. I want to work with people who are all in, even if that looks a little different between each one of us, what we're contributing, but I don't want to play small. So that's been a big deal for me. And I will just say over the last eight, nine years, when I've had these opportunities, it's been a maturation process. Like when Donna offered or started to have conversation with me about joining a board she was on, uh, I kind of slow rolled a little bit and said, Donna, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I'm there yet, right? I don't know that I have the time. I don't have that I have clarity. There's a few things that I still feel a little uncertain about. I think that's what we owe it to the people who are considering this, right? But we ought we ought to do our diligence to make sure that there is alignment and congruence. Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, and, and those are great points. Uh, one, being professional above everything else speaks to yourself. Uh, when you get to the point where you realize that things aren't going down the right path that you, you know, and it could be a good path for the organization, but it's no longer a good path for you. Mm -hmm. right? You don't, you don't just like, well, this sucks. And, you know, like I said, take your ball, go home. No, you, okay. Um, how do I exit in a professional manner where no one's left, you know, holding, holding this like, Oh, we expected Bruce to be part of this event, that event, this, this, and this. No, you say, okay, well, uh, I see myself leaving in the next 90 days. Um, I'm only going to be able to do this, this, and this. I, I have to pull back. And you have those conversations with them. You know, maybe there's something where a conversation leads to realignment and you continue. Right. Maybe it's one of those, mm -hmm. hey, we appreciate you saying 90 days, but you're good to leave now. Um, and we try our best not to have hard feelings because if you're involved in an organization, you meant and we're in alignment with it. But the you know, goal we, is to, oh sorry, go ahead. You know, we, we always want to make sure that we're we're doing that in a right manner. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, there's so many and, and I've had that opportunity where people said, Hey, I think you'd be great for my board. And I've had the conversation with them. I looked and said, I'm not there yet. 
what you all see is this, this, and this. But, you know, I could bring, you know, hey, I have a brand. I have, you know, I, I have a, a good network. And I can help you by being associated, but I'm not a board member for you. What you actually need is this, this, and that. And, and it takes a lot of that reality of being able to look at yourself. You know, do you have the time? Do you have the resources? Do you have the passion? Uh, but more importantly, you know, as Donna talked about the compliments and, and the flattery, you know, and you're like, oh yeah, you know, like we're inflating our egos. And you gotta be able to say, no, I'm not the right person. And maybe you say, I'm not the right person, but I know someone. Or right. you recommend someone else. Yeah, that's right. Or I can't do it now, but I would love for you to come back to me in six or 12 months and let's work on it then. And, and those are things that I, I think we all have to have uh, within ourselves because opportunities will come left and right, but you have to understand timing means everything. That's right. You, um, I was asked to be on a board and I was helping this board. It was startup. I mean, like they had this start but they weren't sure the direction i think i still have the piece of paper that we drew you know our vision on like literally drew it you know out and i copied it onto a like you know digitalized the whole thing um and started there like them building and then eventually they he was like i i would really like you on the board and it was weird because i was like in one sense, it kind of made sense, right? I was helping with the startup. We were having all these meetings. And I actually said, you know, I let me think about this. And I declined it. He, they were surprised. But I said, here's my thought. It's going to look like the Donna and so-and-so show. And it's not. And I think that you're board needs to get more engaged and I don't think I'm going to help you with that I would do better as an advisor for you and yes and I would do better talking through stuff with you call me anytime and we can talk through it because I know the ground up I mean hell we developed the concept together and I've sat in on the meetings that developed you know the uh, mission and the vision and with his with the board I sat with them we did all this stuff and I said I and don't take that the wrong way because I love your mission I love what you're doing I just don't think it's a smart move right now scroll ahead right I still advise to them and they are now working on training and getting volunteers and so I said oh like what are you doing now and they're like oh we're the training and I'm gonna have a stakeholders meeting for the training. I'm like, oh, when is it? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'm like, oh, just let me know when and where. And he stopped and was like, well, you're not one of the stakeholders. And I'm like, oh. And then I had to like recheck <laughs> myself because he was right. I didn't need to be there. That's not my role. Like I, I'm the person like I'm stuck. And I, but I had worked so close with them and it was kind of partly my baby that was standing up, you know, and he was getting his feet and then he, you know, like kept him on track for his vision and no, don't go over here. Think about this, whatever. And then he's got teeth, he's going, he's building. So I instead went, okay, called some of my people that I know and I'm like, Hey, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you up to? I have a board that I think is going to make, but they need some people that have some experience with fundraising, marketing, blah, blah. And I know your background, you know, and I, and said, didn't talk to them about it, planting a seed in your head, no pressure. And they're honestly in the middle of thinking about it right now. But it was like such an interesting process. I came home and I'm like, I'm not sure if my feelings are hurt or not. <laughs> it was just because I was so close to it. But he, they were right. They was right to do that. So it's funny. And, and I'll take that as an amazing thing and its perspective. When, when someone is writing their book 
you know, you might get the shout out, you know, as, you know, inspiration or, yeah. but you're not part of the book. You're not, you're not a chapter, right? You know, you helped, you know, get to where they need to be. Yeah, spark it. But it's not yours. Right. And, and I find myself in this role. I actually enjoy that role more than Me the too. formal being one, because one, I'm able to provide insights, perspectives, and help them reach that, you know, that starting point where they can get the ball rolling and things mm-hmm. start to build momentum. Uh, and I, I taught transition workshops. One of the guys I taught in San Diego followed me to Jacksonville. He came here and said, hey, is anyone doing this? I'm just like, no. He's like, we should do it. I said, I'm in. Uh, and then I had to harass him a little bit to put, you know, yes into action. And then about six months into it, he was like, hey, I'm going to make it its own nonprofit. It's going to do this, do that. And I'm like, that's great. And he was like expecting me to be like number one, number two, you know, uh, on the team. And I'm like, I will advise you. I will help you. I will champion. Uh, I will do whatever it is you know, I can do to help. But I'm involved in too many things right now to do it. And as things start moving forward, and it's amazing. I think it's the six-year anniversary is coming up uh, this summer. And it's like, I still say we. When I talk about it, it's we. But the reality is, I'm a footnote. You know, I was a co-founder. Yeah. But I never formally joined. And so we have those things where like, hey, I'm a part of this. And you're like, oh, are you really? Um, yeah. And there's like, hey, I'm a part of this, but I never committed to put my name on the door to take responsibility, but I want to come with. And that's, and sometimes you know, that's, that's the ego of us. It's like, oh, hey, yeah. I was there, I was there on day one. So I love that you brought that up. And this is where I talk about, you know, we all have to have our champions, our people that when when we're getting started, we ran into a roadblock and someone helped us move the boulder and move forward. Right. Well, they're not, they're not part of the team. They served a purpose at that point. And we might reference back and forth with them, but we have to understand the train, you know, kept moving and we didn't get on. Yeah. So we can champion and, and cheerlead, but we have to understand yeah, it's not, not the reward it. is watching the success happen. The reward is they're standing on their feet to do this. So sorry, Jay, I know you were gonna say no. something. No, you're okay. I, I love listening to of you. You're I agree with with what you're saying. Look, some of us are really good ideators, right? We we can get in a space and brainstorm, generate ideas together, and we can be the catalyst that someone else grabs a hold of something and then runs with it and and that's fine. We don't have to have credit for everything, right? There's plenty that I may be the instigator of an idea that <laughs> germinates and brings to fruition. Man, I love celebrating them. I want to see if I could shift this just a little bit because we're yep. deep into the conversation now. I'd love to see if I can draw it from you two. I'm going to share a couple things. Best advice you have for for people that are being offered a seat on a board or considering to want to you know, pursue a board opportunity we've already established for the right reasons. Uh, I wanted to share a couple things to our listeners to think about. First, get clarity around what you're really passionate about. I mean, there is a cause out there for almost anything and everything you can think of. And if there's not, that might be the impetus for you creating a new nonprofit. But look, veterans' causes, as we champion on this show pet causes, elderly causes, child causes, women causes, right? Trauma causes, on and on and on, unsheltered, uh, whatever it may be, find out what you're really passionate about, Habitat for Humanity. And a good place to go is a United Way. Wherever you live, if you can contact a local United Way, United Ways are fantastic for having robust lists Mm -hmm. of all the different nonprofits in your area. So that's that's a place that you can go. The other thing I would say to you if, is if you're going to commit to a board, ask questions on the front end to get clarity about what you're stepping into. I used the word governance earlier, Bruce, and I love you caused me to rephrase, I think, in my mind. Some boards are advisory only and some are working boards. So mm-hmm. find out, ask questions, find out the different roles, fundraising goals, vision, 
uh, for it and, and ask about the kind of training they provide. Here locally, Donna and I are in the San Antonio, Texas area. Mm-hmm. There is something called the San Antonio Area Foundation. And they do a great job of providing classes on a recurring basis that can help people maximize their experience serving on a board. So those just a couple bits of info that I wanted to share uh, that might be food for thought for somebody. I turn to both of you, food for thought for somebody that might be invited or is wanting to become uh, active in a board. Go ahead, Bruce. Oh. Yeah, as we talk about passion and purpose, if you're not passionate about the purpose, you you have no business being a part of it. Um, understanding it's flattering to be on the board, but understanding the requirements, the time um, restrictions that you have, yeah. um, and and understand, you know, what you can give, what you have to do, and um, someone might say, I want you to be the secretary. And you're like, you know, I, I'm not right for the secretary, but I would love to be the treasurer or I would love to be the social media or I'd love to be the event. Um, you know, have conversations. Again, when someone approaches you, it doesn't need to be this or nothing. You know, sure. they might not, you know, a lot of times we don't even know when we're starting these nonprofits and, and creating the board of all the different pieces that are out there. So, you know, having those mentors, those advisors, and being able to come back and say, I'm really good at putting events together. Oh, I haven't thought about that yet. Yeah, we could do this. Or I could do this or I could do that. And and where is your value added? You know, five people might be able to do the treasurer, the secretary, uh, the chair. But what is that unique thing that you can do that is going to be value added and take them into a broader area. And I think when we do it, man, we got to think like, like kids, like what, what gets you excited? You know, what is it you want to be like? I want to do this. I can't wait to kick this door open and be like, check these out. And, and I tell you, if you don't have that, like fire, you know, in in your gut, in your chest, in, in your mind, you probably should back away and say thanks, but no, or thanks, but not right now. Uh, but those are those things. Don't be afraid to say, if I say no now, I'm I'm going to miss out on an opportunity forever. No. Yeah. Opportunities will come back around. Uh, as we said, you can be involved without having your name on the door. You know, you can do all these different pieces. And when the time is right, then you, you join in. So don't be afraid to to say no and understand, you know, the value add that you, you have or don't have. So that's what I'd add. That's good stuff. Donna. I, I think it's many hands make light work. And so a lot of people are, you know, you said, you know, like, I don't have enough time and I'm sorry, but, you know, I have this going on. I, I get you. Like you said, Jay, we all got something going on. We are all carving out time to do something. But if we're all carving out that time, we don't all have to carve out as much time if we're all have each other's back and we're all pitching in together. So if you know one person is coming together, like here's the list, and then we're putting it out there, and the other hands are taking it, like okay, I've got our parts. Well, that's great. Everybody just gave an hour versus that one person giving six hours, right? And so I agree with both Jay and Bruce. Put your ego aside. Yes, I know it's flattering to be asked to be on a board and that's great, but it's not about an ego and it's not about how cool you look on a board or how cool you look in your suit when you're posted on their Facebook page or their website. It's about what you can offer, your network that you can leverage, your critical thinking skills, your creative thinking skills, um, your ability to look forward and, and determine where the pitfalls may be and how to mitigate that. That's why you're there. And I'm going to mention one thing when you guys talk about money to the board, I tell you my philosophy, I'm not putting anything forward until I see how the board is functioning. Sorry. You can ask me. I've been asked and I'll be like, okay. 
And then I just look at them. I don't say a word. And when I see the, because really, if it's not functioning and the nonprofit's not functioning well, it's a money pit then. And the hundred bucks or 50 bucks or a thousand, then people are like, oh, that's showing your commitment. No, showing my commitment is showing up. That's showing my commitment. I do understand the philosophy of it, but I need to see that we're working here and it's happening. And so, yeah, okay. You know, when I show up, gala happens, we'll give money, whatever it is, but don't immediately assume that and, and think that's your commitment level. I had somebody tell me that like, oh yeah, you know, I was asked to be on this board. I don't even know what to do. I just got on it. You know how that goes. You just give money and, and, and then you just sit there. And I was like, okay, we weren't there to quote. talk about that, but so I left it alone. <laughs> I had this quote way on my spirit listening to you, Donna. I think it's Henry David Thoreau who said, your actions speak so loudly that I can't hear what you're saying, right? It's either Thoreau or or Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson, mm -hmm. one of those two. Forgive me if I miss a tribute, but but that's the deal, right? I you can tell me whatever you want to say, but I'm gonna watch you to see if you're invested more than anything. Are you yeah. putting sweat equity in? Uh to me, that's far more important than anything else. Yep. It, and I'll throw it out there as we talk about, you know, fundraising, because that's always the biggest frustration with startups. Well, you're trying to start business, nonprofits, sure. um, and and I've I've had it where we we had those conversations early about we need to raise X amount of funds, and I've always said for what, right? And those are and those are right there. We talk about you know requirements. You know what is your what are you asking from your board? Uh, you don't say let's go raise a bunch of funds just to raise a bunch of funds, and you know not organizations that I've been a part of, but we've seen large organ, you know, nonprofit organizations that it was a great idea and it just took off like a, a wildfire. And all of a sudden they had this, you know, surplus funds, but they didn't have anything scheduled for it. And the IRS loves that. <laughs> and, and we all know if you have, if you're a nonprofit and all of a sudden you have all this money at the end of the year, People are like, well, are you really a nonprofit? And you violated X, Y, and Z. So you, Correct. people are like, we have to spend it. And okay. then people start saying, well, we have to spend money, but it's not in alignment with their purpose or their cause. And people who donated money was for this. And then all of a sudden they're out here, well, let's go to this you know, uh, event or let's go fund this or let's go do like some cool things. So let's go buy some, you know, right. go like, wow. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, why are people getting drug away in handcuffs? Like there are legal it requirements. There are. It's true. Right. And a lot of people, when they join a board, might not fully understand that when you become a board member, there are responsibilities, legal Legality. responsibilities that you are now a part of. Yeah. And we don't want to say it because it's the ugly part. But turn on the news every now and then or just do a little research about, you know, nonprofit legal issues. And hence why Jay talked about everybody should have a lawyer on their board. Yeah. It just it happened out here. There was a big nonprofit out here that it bad things happened. I was just I left the board. I left the board because we had requested information from the CEO, the executive director, you know, whatever the title was. Uh, and the individual kept punting, 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 wasn't giving the glimpses I felt we needed. It caused concerns for me that things weren't being operated on the up and up. And it was the catalyst, the main reason for why I resigned from the board, because I wasn't going to be part of something that wasn't uh, being operated with integrity. There's mm -hmm. just no way. And, and transparency, you yeah. know. You know, you might hear someone say it, but can you see it? Yeah. And that's something yeah. when you're talking about joining a board, you know, you need, what is the communication schedule? You know, can I see the records? Can I see the financials? Can I see all these things that are going in? Because as, as you said, you know, you can say all the things you want to say, but do your actions reflect right. that? Reflect yeah. that. And exactly. so, so transparency, not only for, the team members, the board members, uh, your donors. Uh, if it's not there, 
man, you got to look for red flags and you got to understand that it's, it's time to hit the, the escape hatch and I'm out. Um, or it's got to be the, I can't even get involved because again, people with the best of intentions find themselves in trouble all the time because they didn't read the fine print. Sure. They, they thought it was a good idea, but they didn't know. Hey, hold on one second. I'm going to, we're going to do something a little different. I know somebody has a hard and fast because he's a, he's like Superman over there. So uh-huh. Bruce, we can wrap this up. Jay, I'm going to let you go. Cause I know you got to. I do. Yeah. I apologize. I know. To no, the it's okay. It's a tight schedule today, but it is. I, I love this talk and I don't want any of the listeners. Bruce, number one, I want to thank you and just commend you for the work you're doing again, for the transparency you shared as you were stepping into this. I think it's that's real. Maybe we invite you back for another conversation around identity and and how men in particular, not saying women don't, but how men in particular sometimes hide those things and act like they don't affect us. But thank you for taking time to be a part of the conversation today. Thank you for work you're doing with veterans, with nonprofits. If you're listening to this, please don't take away from this that serving on a board is bad it is not Uh, i think you i hope you've heard in bruce and donna and myself there are things we love about doing it what we are talking about is intentionality we are talking about making sure that to bruce's words uh there's purpose wrapped up in why we're doing it and so i'm telling you there's a lot of great opportunities out there to get involved and Because you all, the listeners, know that I'm a quote guy. I don't remember who to attribute this one to, but I bet you've heard it. And you may even know off the, you know, you'll hear me say it and you go, oh, Jay, how did you not know that? But it, it, the quote says, you've not lived until you've done something for someone who will never be able to repay you. And to me, I have a servant heart and I really do love being immersed in my community. I love championing a cause uh, where people are passionate and I have a passion for the work they're doing and it fulfills me in ways I can't describe. So I'm happy to sacrifice some of my time to give to that end. And I, I think if you will look out there in your community, you'll find a cause too. So Donna, thanks uh, Absolutely. for giving me the opportunity just to share that great work being done out there. So please don't listen to this and go, Oh my gosh, that's why I don't want to be a part of it. No, no, there's good. No, there's- there is good. And that is a note that it needs to end on. We're doing this so we can build good boards, right? Yeah, true, That's true. what we want. Yes. So, true. all right, Jay, I'll let you go. We'll wrap Thank up. You, Bruce, it's a pleasure. Likewise. All right. So yeah, we could, we probably could go all day. I mean, you and I talked forever on, boards and and what our frustration were but i i think jay makes a really good point we say this because when we get on boards we want to get on effective boards because when we're on effective boards like incredible things happen and it's not as tasking as you think it is when everybody is jumping on and they're communicative and they're talking it no it is volunteer and it should not take up every waking minute of your day. And if it's interfering with every other part of your life, then that's a board you need to also reconsider whether you need to be on. But at the same it, time, you got to give some time. And, and that's one of those ones where there's volunteer boards mm-hmm. and there's paid boards. So yeah, as we, as we're having the discussion and we're talking about some of the, the, negative things about you know ill prepared boards there's incredible boards out there that are doing so much work that's just like yes please and and you see them and you're like i want to be part of that Mm -hmm. and that's what we have to do is we have to learn what works what doesn't you know and when it doesn't work and we start to see things going that way we have to just say stop this is this is the rabbit hole we don't want to go down and having those advisors, those, uh, those structure builders, those, you know, influencers who can go back and say, Hey, we need to sit the board down and give you training. You know, we need to do X, Y, or Z to make this thing great. So never will I tell someone boards are horrible, run away from them. No, find the ones that, that fulfill your passion and purpose and, and get on board. And how can you, um, help drive success? And again, 
it happens in many ways. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being on the board, but understand where you are, what you can give, what you can't give, and you know have those. Uh, we'll, you know, I'm Marine. We'll call them our left and right lateral limits. <laughs> I can't go too far this way. I can't go too far that way. Right. Be upfront. And and we talk about communication schedules. We talk about roles. We talk about you know you have to have three to be a legitimate board uh, for the nonprofit. But doesn't mean you only have three people. As you said, if three people are doing it, maybe it's 10 hours a week. But if we have five, six, you know, 10 that all have their piece of the pie, we're talking 30, 45 hour. And it's not every week. It's here or there. You know, it's it's what is the level of commitment? And Three to four and, hours. I thought you said 35. I'm like, 35 hours? Wait, like three to four No, I was talking hours, about 30 yeah. to 45 minutes. Oh, minutes, Or an yes. hour or two here, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would start breaking it back down. Um, and as you talked about, you know, you, you're uh, in charge of running uh, an event. You know, well, you're not doing events every month. Hmm. You're not doing events all the time. So when you have that event, Hey, I've got to be able to ratchet up and serve those hours. But that when that event over, I can ratchet back down. Yes. And I'll tell you the whole idea of people coming together on that that board. I love that board. They're very kind people. They did not, they didn't have the skill set for what needed to be done. And they were trying to the best of their ability. Um and there was reasons why that it wasn't happening, but at the end of it, it was me dragging a board across the finish line. I was exhausted and I had to pick up things that I wasn't expected to pick up because I was heading this. So I was like, I, I had very complex spreadsheets and like everything doled out. Oh yeah. I was, uh, I was looking like a whole, and I, every single, every single board meeting we had, I got up there with my computer, plugged it in, showed them where things were, what the expectations were step by step. I remember specifically, we were three weeks out from the event when everybody clicked in that we didn't have everything wrapped up. And I, and trust me, it wasn't like I wasn't saying stuff every single time. It's because they didn't have the experience, right? When it all came down to the wire, and we had to execute this uh, because people didn't step in. We had no volunteers. The entire board had to be present for the whole thing. Um, pick up and clean up ended up on us. And uh, my poor daughter got roped into it, you know. And <laughs> again, were these bad people? No, they were not. And what I appreciated the most, the board president says, we're doing a hot wash. Well, I already had my after action all written up. I, yeah, welcome to the military, right? I was like, shoop, I'm writing this all up. And we were able to talk about the gross failures. And I appreciated that more than anything. Um, I, I ended up leaving that board, honestly, because I had too many scheduling conflicts coming up. My children had stuff after school. I, I couldn't give the focus that I wanted to. And so I thought about it and I said, and after that, I really needed a break too. And so I said, Hey, you know, I'm going to step back. And the board president's like, I kind of thought you would. I'm like, honestly, a lot of it is because of, <laughs> she's like, I worry out, <laughs> but it was because of my kid's schedule. And there was other things going yeah. on that wasn't aligning up with that. And so I stepped back. I don't hate yeah. them. I thought they were great people. They, they just didn't have what was needed. Now they're doing it again. And hopefully they have the skill set. They saw what was needed. I handed them that spreadsheet. They just got to plug and play. I hope that's all working for them, you know? And and that's a great thing we talk about, you know, skill sets. Mm -hmm. There's certain things. Um, I, I've done events, small, large scale. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm perfectly good at it. But I understand that I need a ops manager, an event manager, an right. event planner to really take the lead. I can do a lot of the big picture. I have no problem being the face and, and the person doing this and that. And I'm really great at the public uh, facing the, you know, uh, talking to the media, talking to uh, sponsors, talking to right. uh, potential speakers. I'm great at that part. But don't ask me 
you know, how to set up the, the floor. You know, where should we enter? Where should we exit? Where's the trash collection points? Where's this? I where's don't that? Know. I'm like, and that's where we get the logistic, uh, logisticians involved. This is where mm-hmm. we get the operations people and everybody has their role mm-hmm. and understanding that you're not the end all be all, you know, grand, grand master of all of this to be able to say, oh, I can do it all. Well, you, when you say you can do it all, you end up failing most of the time. You don't um, want you don't want to be that person. I ended up the, the marketing fell through, right? And I and I was like, oh, when I realized that that how it was um, set up, and the person I set it up with, and it wasn't happening. And if the probably a, a month or two out, we had new board members, maybe a little bit longer out than that. They saved me. They saved me. And that's something uh, we also have to remember is as the board, understanding when we need to bring in volunteers, when we need to bring in outside for X, Y, or Z. And it doesn't mean we have to bring them all on the board. We have to bring them all into the organization. But you bring them in for the event. And have, you know, for this, we're bringing in this. Great. Right. We had it. We done. We, we thank them. We gave them less appreciation. We, we showed showed X, Y, or Z uh, to to show respect and we move back on. But when we talk about that board and figure it out uh, and, and just kind of to, to go back, when you're creating a board, you have to have a reason for the board. There needs to be realistic uh, expectations on paper so if someone can review that. So you know when you start recruiting for board members, you know what you're you know, we're not for. just recruiting our friends. You know, we're not recruiting names. We're recruiting people that have skills, a certain skill set that are going to be able to enhance and take and us to that level. That's very important. And the and when Jay was talking about, I was looking at him to come on a board. I was looking at him for a specific reason, right? Because of his background, I was like, you know, he would be really good to help with x to do x and i was straight up with him but what i was seeing is that the board itself was not coming together like it needed to and what it was going to turn into was us carrying stuff and i was like "Mm." and so i backed away i didn't say anything else i was like i'm gonna hold on this and maybe we're having some transition let's see what this looks like and i'm gonna hold tight on that and again, just go back out there. Everybody's listening. We're not telling you not to join a board. We're just telling you, do your homework, do your research, just like you would do anything else. Um, well, find the be, passion, find the purpose, and be upfront yes. about expectations, what you're looking to get out of. Because remember, if you're joining a board, you have to have you know a, a, a purpose into why are you doing this? Are you doing it because the cause is that great? Are you doing it because you can make an impact? Um, don't just do it because it looks good on a resume or your LinkedIn profile or, you know, someone's going to be like, oh, look in the community. You know, Bruce is doing this and this. He's a great person. No. No. You know, but don't, don't look for the superficial. Look for the, the material of what it really means for what you're going to be giving your time for. Because remember, you can't get your time back. So if you're going to invest it, invest it in something that's um, meaningful, something that resonates with you, uh, the, the cause. You know, it, it could be someone in your family had cancer. So you want to be part of cancer research, cancer fundraising, something that brings um, awareness. You know, wh- Whether you're in the military veterans, we talk mental health, we talk suicide. Uh, you know, we want to have something that's going to bring light to that. Mm-hmm. Find that. And, and make that the reason. And again, we can find these different nonprofits. We can find these different causes, these different events, these different movements that you can be a part of. And one might be an event. I'm going to be part of this group to put this event together. One might be, I'm going to be part of this board for three years. Uh, but understand you have that. So as we're kind of wrapping this up and we're, we're, we're coming back and saying this, please don't take this as, hey, don't join a board. That's not no. the purpose. It might sound like it a little bit because we're talking about some of the frustrations and the, the heartaches that we've had with different boards. But the three of us, 
never said we will never join a board again. No, it, we don't want to be. It's help. It's we're the, trying to help them to navigate. One, yes. as you, as the person, you have to one first know yourself. You have to know, like you said, God, don't let me lay out a floor plan for an event. I like have no idea where the <laughs> trash can goes. Right. But that's real. Right. And in it, I have to laugh that I was like heading event and I had to do top to bottom because of the situation we're in. And yet I was the person in the military when it was somebody's retirement party. I was like, do you want one of those planned ones that they do? Or do you want a Hoffmeyer one? They're like, what's that? I'm like, I find a cool bar and we go have a drink. And, you know, because I, I don't care for that. Right. I did it because I had to, and I had to figure out the trash can did go. But if we had everybody functioning, I would have released that and said, and I did on some levels because we had certain rooms and I'm like, oh, that's your room. Have at it. Go set up. I, don't look at me. Go make it pretty. Right. Know who you are. Know your skill set and know what you're willing to offer. Because if you're really good at event planning, but you don't have the time to do it, then you need to be upfront with that, right? Like I, I can do this and I can advise and help, but I cannot leave because of whatever, right? Be upfront with that. So that's one thing. And number two, all this that we're saying is to help you navigate the boards that you potentially want to be on and for executive directors and board presidents and board members know what you're looking for too. And so when all of that is happening, we are going to build better quality boards that is going to be much more effective and will have more success across the board, you know? Um, and this is a whole other topic. We're not going to get into it, but learning how to collaborate with other nonprofits and the benefits of that. So we do a whole, we could do a whole podcast on that because there are so many nonprofits that are doing very similar things, you know, as a board member, how do you learn where they fit, right? That That's a whole other topic. But I'm just saying there's a lot there. There's a, there's a lot that can happen, a lot that you can do. And it is fun and exciting to be visionary and to, like you said, get, get excited like a kid, right? Like Jay was all like smiling when you said that because that's what we're like, the sky's the limit. What do we want to do? Can we do it? You know? And then when you execute it, you're like, God damn, look what we did. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it, there's, there's that uh, adrenaline rush. Yeah. Uh, being able to do it. That we all and need. When, you, <laughs> when it's done. And as we're kind of like crashing after, you know, we've reached a certain pinnacle, a certain goal. And we're like, wow, we just did that. And mm -hmm. that is a very powerful feeling. Uh, you know, we we start these nonprofits, we start these movements, we start the these uh, things with a, a a purpose and a passion of we're going to help, we're going to solve this issue, we're going to we're going to uh, address this or address that, mm -hmm. and it's it might just be two people having a conversation with an idea, and it snowballs into it, and then all of a sudden you look back three six you know nine twelve months later or maybe a couple of years back. And you're like, man, we've been doing this for 10 years. Right. Like, look what we've done. Look what we did. And you come back and you got that picture of, hey, it was two knuckleheads having a conversation one day. And it was almost like a, you know, you know what would be really cool if we could do. And then you look back and you're like, that's how it begun. And it doesn't have to be this, you know, a magical idea with a light bulb, like, like it shatters above your head because it was so bright and you have it. It could just be, you know, I had a bad experience with that and I don't want other people to have this experience. Right. And you say, okay, let's, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. Let's, let's make something right. better than it was. Let's create something that is needed. So have your ideas. Uh, don't stop dreaming. Don't stop having inspirations and go and build the things that the world needs because we don't know that they exist. Um, I joke, I didn't know what, what Zoom was when COVID started. I joined an organization and we hopped on Zoom and figured it out like in a heartbeat. And we're doing, you know, global virtual events. And it's like, yeah. wow. So, you know, just because you didn't know what it was doesn't mean it's not there. And if it wasn't there, 
Like no one was doing those. We hopped on and did them. And and it made it a huge impact. Yep. So find those things and and go be your own champion. Go be the person who solves the problem that you create and or that you not you create, but that you see. Yeah. Uh, it is an amazing feeling. Um uh, I love it. It's why I keep doing it. Um, uh, but you know, you as again, I, I keep talking about passion and purpose will take you a long way if you listen to it. Right. Uh, if you follow. So and, I just want to say Go ahead. You know, finish up. Yeah. No, I just want to say like thanks. And I'm I'm glad, you know, that, that Teddy and Caitlin had, had that thing that led to us having this weird conversation with two complete strangers saying, sure, I'll you know, Caitlin said, you should really talk to each other. And, you know, we're veterans. So of course we said, why not? We'll have right. a talk. And that talk went like an hour or so and we both had to like run to the next meetings. And then it brought us here today. Yeah. And and we'll just, you know, harass Jay for you. Know, we out we outlived him uh you know with <laughs> with the scheduling. You know, he can only take so much of us. Uh yeah. but conversations make so such an impact, make such a difference. So I just want to say thank you for uh, allowing me to come on and, and give my two cents to be a part of the conversation, the discussion. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to kind of you know see the comments uh, when you put put the episode out, and people are are giving their perspectives and their spots and their experiences. Yeah, because it's all about what we can learn. Hey, I'm, I'm the guy on here talking with y'all today. I very much am the listeners for the next episode. So it's it's shared experiences and shared uh, lessons learned, um, and that's how we grow and become better and do things. So just thanks for the invite and let me uh, you know give my two cents. No, absolutely. I mean, like I said, when when we actually after that first meeting, I actually called Jay and I'm like, ho ho, we're gonna be doing a really good one, you know, because some of the, I mean, I think all of them are awesome, but some just are like that things that kind of get us and I'm like, Oh, let's talk about this, you know, and, and how do we get that information out and how do we do it better? You know? So, and I just say the audience, like, if you have this thought or, or you have questions, don't be shy, reach out. You want to talk to us? We'll talk. We talk to anybody, you know, and, uh, and ask, you know, I mean, seriously, Bruce and I met through someone else and just found this commonality of, of boards and board and having these, board of director discussions um and the whole reason we want to do this because we want to do it better we want to be better as board members we want to have better boards and and we want to build something better and so i agree we don't we don't want people to shy away from it we want more people to step forward and that's really what what the whole purpose is of this right and and i'll I'll just throw it out there our conversation had nothing to do with boards. Uh, that was not part of the introduction. It was not nope. part of, nope. uh, Hey, you guys got to talk about boards. And no, not at all. It, it had nothing. It's like, Hey, uh, Bruce is in this space doing cool things. You're in the space doing cool things. You all should talk about cool things together. And it just naturally led that way. So again, um, conversations matter. Have as many of them as possible. Yes. You never know what doors will open uh, by having them. So again, you know, it, it's been great. I really appreciate it. And and we'll have to harass uh, Caitlin for the introduction and say, look what we did. I harass Caitlin all the time. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something that, that she's a good, she's good peep. She actually helps me out actually in my business. And so she's helping me out next month. So she, they are good people. Um, you know, they could speak to boards and nonprofits. Teddy's pretty proficient and I'm sure he's got his own take on all that stuff. So, um, you know, I think that's kind of the wrap up is get talking, learn, be willing to step in a space, but be willing to step in a space, knowing your intention of why you're stepping in there. You may not have all the information and it's fine, but know what your intention is. And if you find Mm, this is not matching what I thought it was, you either a learn and grow from it or b saying, this is too far off of alignment with me. I'm just going to step aside. There shouldn't be any hard feelings. There really shouldn't be. Um, and you shouldn't look at it personally. You really have to look at it as we are trying to build and maintain and sustain the health of a nonprofit. And that is what our focus should always be. So 
All right, everybody. I think we have, uh, we had a good discussion on this. So Jay yeah, ran off. He is doing his, uh, he's doing his coaching. He's got coach. He's got, he's got clients all over the world. He's like a big wig. So, and you, by the way, you have a little name for yourself. Uh, Cause I reached out to someone and I said, Hey, do you know uh, Bruce Thompson? It was in relation to another nonprofit um, that they were familiar with. And uh, they're like, uh, he, he's like, but you know, he, this is exactly what they said. He actually, because I'm not sure why, but he bops in between nonprofits all the time, but he's like a really nice guy. And I went, that's because he's smart because <laughs> <laughs> he's helping him out. Right. And so we just started laughing, but you, you're known, right? That was somebody that's in a whole other state. And I happened to ask if they knew you and that person's running a nonprofit and they did. And uh, they, their comment was, yeah, he works with a lot of nonprofits and he's always working in between them. And uh, and he's like, he's a really nice guy. So and, there you go. And I love that because, again, we talk about actions over words. Uh, mm. And so when when you are doing the right things for the right reasons and people notice, uh, whether they were tell you you're, personally, it doesn't matter. But when you hear it from someone else that said, oh, yeah, I, I brought up your name and people like, they they lit up and smiled and said i love that guy or you know i, I love them or they do like they're wow um man you're the, the heart warms up you, you get the smile you're on doing your face it right. you're doing and, it right and it's just reassurance that what you do is matters and is making an impact mm-hmm. and it fuels the fire to keep doing it to, to do it a little Agreed. bit further a little bit more uh and that's the whole purpose of of nonprofits and boards it's is to improve things uh from where they are today to where they can be tomorrow mm-hmm. um and, and i love it and you guys got me all teared up you know someone said positive things about me and uh, i'm like oh. the uh, marines but, but teary not, eye. So, there it is <laughs> marines have feelings too <laughs> we just don't remember where you put when them. you take away their crayons <laughs> leave my crowns alone now <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. We're going to keep going down rabbit holes. We're horrible because we'll talk all day, but we're going to wrap this up. Bruce, I thank you so much for coming on. This was an awesome, awesome discussion. I think it was an important discussion and I, I greatly appreciate it. I know Jay did too. He lights up when, when he's really engaged. And so uh, everybody, you know how it goes, right? From all of us here at our parent company or parent podcast coming home well, Um, And us here at Beyond the Front Line, we thank you. We want you to like and share and engage and give us your thoughts about this. We want to know what you think about boards and and, uh, maybe your experience or your insight. Um, We love to talk and we love to engage. So from all of us here to all of you, we hope you have an awesome week. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Front Line, a podcast of coming home well. Join us every other Wednesday. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review.